good morning and welcome to Sunday Morning Mass. Please find a pew and be seated. If you're late, you're going to have to sit up front. Yeah, that's why we're up front. Uh, there's not a lot of seats to be found, and, mm -hmm. and that's a good thing, actually. So we're glad this is kind of something new that we do for our Fen viewers. We really do appreciate you, so we do a little thing called Sunday Morning Mass to bring you the very latest from some of our comments and emails. And uh, as you are watching us right now, we are indeed behind the scenes uh, taking your comments and questions so you can leave them below as you're watching. Yep. Um, this will start at 7 a.m. Pacific and 10 Eastern. Uh, so each and every Sunday, as long as we have time to do this. It's about as live as you can get from us right now. Right now. Uh, it'll have to do. And uh, at least know that we're making an effort to try to get to you on Sundays. Okay? So please be seated. Uh, uh, I give you peace. Peace be with you. And also, and also with, with you. you. Lou. And you. Ronnie. I came across your channel a while back, but only started getting into it recently. Very entertaining. Boy, I'll tell you what, you've got good taste, meh. M-E-H, meh, meh, <laughs> meh. You say that you want to interview old Forrest Fenn, but you also say that you never read his book. What author would want to be interviewed about his life and experiences by reporters who he haven't even read the book he wrote about it? Doesn't make sense. He's got a point. Matt goes on to say, if you give me an address, I'd be happy to send you a copy of the book. It just might help you land that interview. Wow. Well, thank I you. I sent him my work address. Dang. And it. he goes on to say, hello, guys. The order has been placed. The book will be shipped directly from the Collected Works Bookstore, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Enjoy. And that's from Mike. Wow. Thank you, Mike, uh, at his Gmail address. That is going above and beyond. And uh, so, uh, as I see it right now, uh, I probably will receive it some one day this week, maybe Friday or something. Yeah. And and the very moment that it comes through the door, as best I can, I will read it as quickly as I can. And then we'll make a transfer with Ronnie so that he can get a good read, too. If somebody wants to send me a book on tape, I would prefer that. <laughs> It'd have to be an 8-track, though. Well, that's not too much to ask. <laughs> Ronnie, Because please. I, I read kind of like R. Kelly does. You need to come into the 80s. <laughs> get a, all right. Bring, put it on cassette. All right. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> All right, how about another comment? Okay, this is a comment from uh, last week's show. Sunday morning mass coffee, sorry. Right, yes, live. Mm -hmm. uh, Lurker Mike. Oh, this is from Mama Llama. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Which I love the name. I love it. <laughs> so Mama Llama says, Lurker Mike is spot on. Here's the key. Imagination exists in the bias-free zone. There, that's what we are right there. You guys are really helping point all the searchers to the treasure. Bravo. And I said, hey, that's how we do. It is how we do, Ron. Uh, and you know what? I think that this really is, it's kind of like a, it's a point where everything, everybody who has an idea can put them all together on one place And maybe something that somebody hasn't thought of before might spring. Because these clues, like we've said before, are a little bit ambiguous, uh, a little vague. And so maybe it will, you know, just click a light bulb on for somebody else. That's all we intend to do each and every time we do one of these shows. It, you know, it, it's not to put anyone down. No. Um, your efforts are, are, are not in vain. Uh, they're very important to you, and, and so we treat them as such. Um, here's one from OK Larry, and you had fun with this one, Ronnie. Lou, Ronnie, in the right order, too. Lou, Ronnie. <laughs> Great show, as always. Unbiased and content is definitely a plus in my book. Thank you very much. But, Ronnie, on the toilet paper show, let me quote Christopher Walken. You're doing it all wrong. <laughs> LOL. Uh, at... Tim and Holly, I've seen you in a few chat rooms. It's nice to see nice people there. And plus, you live so close to the search area. I live in Florida, mm. but it does have its perks, just not in the hunt. Right. And Ronnie, you said back to him, what? Oh, 
I said, and to also quote Christopher Walken, I need more cowbell. <laughs> oh, my good. Let's see. Uh, okay, Larry says, at Corvette Ronnie, I have to apologize for my misquote, but yours was spot on. <laughs> Doing and tone don't even rhyme, I see. You, sir, are one up on me. Got too deep in the beers. Wheels tend to slow down. Be <laughs> safe, brother. As long as you're at home, okay, Larry? You're good to go, brother. Yep. <laughs> what else? Uh, this is from BKS. Okay. Can you imagine how many ex-wives the finder will have chasing them? Oh, my God. I'll clue you in on one thing. A mile is a desert of hiding spots in the Rocky Mountains. No joking. Go boots on the ground, and you will understand. Trust me. I already understand. Yeah, I think we've got that covered. Uh, I mean, I seriously, I could hide something out there. Well, and if you've seen the uh, the Netflix series uh, Breaking Bad, what's his name? Uh, White, uh, Walter White, buried a pallet full of money in the desert. Oh, and he couldn't remember where. He did remember where. Oh, he, he did. He did find it. He was able to find. It. Nobody, nobody messed with it. Right. It's out there. Now he didn't have a bunch of clues leading to it, you know, where it was. But still, if you bury something out there, if something is hidden, it's tough going. And I and I re replied back, checking under every single rock and in every single crevasse doesn't sound that difficult. And it couldn't be. No. I mean, no. come on. He's capable. Child could do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Copper Dan, getting to know him really well. Really enjoy his comments. He says, is that New York Yankees jersey? That's what I wore last week. I'm unsubscribing. <laughs> Let's go, Twins. Oh, boo. That's okay. I, it's, twins are fine. Yeah. Ronnie, what was your comment? Do you recall? <laughs> I said, uh, just whatever you do, don't mention that team from Beantown. It's not allowed in my house. Yeah. As a Yankee fan, I can't even tell you what I see. Because I don't say the name of the city or the team or the color or the clothing item, I know it's a little extreme, <laughs> but I had to come up with a name, and that name for that team is. Oh, right. Well, now I'm a. You just heard a beep. <clears throat> you just heard a beep. I'm a I'm a Giants fan. I actually I like the Giants and the A's. The Giants are awful this year, but you know the best part? They beat the Dodgers last night. They did, huh? Two to one. Yeah. Thank you. Close game. Woo! Hey, did you know that Bumgarner? is in talks with the New York Yankees. Oh, God, that would kill me. Uh, not me. You know what, though? He's, he'd fit right in. He's a little bit, he's he's a shadow of what he used to be. He's still, he can still be overpowering, but yeah. uh, it wouldn't be like losing him three years ago. JT. JT says, no more gold coins left from the chest. I sold them all on eBay. They're gone. I haven't decided what to do with the autobiography. Hmm. It might go through a private auction house. Corvette Ronnie says, I'll start the bidding at a dollar. <laughs> Dang, you're lucky you always got a dollar. <laughs> Me? I got about 26 cents. Uh, let's see. I and got this Chris from... Kibble, Chris oh. Kibbe says, JT, sorry, my friend, you haven't found the chest. Keep looking, though. I'll keep the light on for you. <laughs> uh, Tim and Holly, who I'm starting to see more comments yeah. from. Thank uh, you. Yes. So their comment is, so right, you guys are great and non-biased and don't put new searchers down when they have an idea, which is typically seen by other channels. Um, I think a new person trying or brings new things, keep up the good work, guys. So, and this one actually had quite a few replies. Um, by the way, they're from Wyoming. They're, they're listening, uh, they're a Colorado searcher, all right? And then I said, glad to have you on board until the treasure is found. There is no incorrect searcher or solve. Correct. Uh, you said, thank you, too. There's room for everyone in this chase, just like there's every there's room for every Fen show. You don't have to read the next one. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, okay, Larry says, great show as always. Unbiased and content is definitely a plus. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is from L. Ryder, who we found out is a uh, a nice lady. Yes, a hey, photographer, in fact. Yeah, and I've seen some of her stuff. Hey guys, another great show. I was wondering if you guys share all of your emails. 
I'd like to show you guys something and get your opinions, but I don't want it to be shared with anyone else. Uh, Ronnie says, if you prefer your email to remain private, all you got to do, just say so. Yep. And I said, exactly, Ronnie. We only share what we have when we have permission. Ask anyone who is in contact with us. Uh, I'm pretty proud of that. And and um, and so is Ronnie. We, if you tell us this is still secret or whatever the case may be, we listen and we understand. Yep. And we don't regurgitate. Well, and I think the fact that she is, she's boots on the ground. or if With she, two friend, lady friends, too. Yes. So, yeah, of course she wouldn't want to anybody else to have her, uh, what the research she's already done. Uh, this one's from Tony Driver. I get a kick out of Tony. Tony says, will not be found uh, Finn's hiding spot and its contents in our lifetime nor in 1,000 plus years. It will probably be a Mad Max world by then when some lucky hiker out in the uh, wonders of nature comes across a different kind of a trove that will make them feel rich and stir the imagination. It will be a good day for that family. So, I mean, that, that's possible. Uh, I said, I'm hoping it's found during this search season. Yeah. I really, man... And it's such a short window. Oh my yeah, that's, god! That's the biggest problem. It really is. It's yeah. you have a you have a very small window that to get through to. I would think one. I mean, unless your search, I'm sorry, unless your solve is right down to a coordinate, uh, man, the the chances of you getting to that are slim and none. I mean, first the the snow has to be gone, and two, the weather has to be cooperative. Mm -hmm. So if either one of those two is not there, it just you can't search. You know what I was just thinking, Ronnie? We can do almost anything with computers. For instance, my prostate cancer, my prostate removal was done by a robot, which obviously is run by a doctor. Right. But uh, when you compare that to what the technology was in, say, 1965, right, uh, it's slightly better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but why is it that someone hasn't written a program that would take all of the information available? And when I say that, I mean like gathering up and gobbling up comments from our show or other shows um, forums, discussion boards, that sort of thing, and come up with a program that would determine one exact spot in the four-state search area. Why hasn't someone done that yet? Well, I'll tell Am you. Am I the first one to think of that? As, as amazing as computers are, if you look at, I think it was called Deep Blue. Deep Blue was a computer that was invented to beat the world's most amazing chess champions. And guess what? It can't beat them all the time. So, if because there are so many different possible moves in chess, you would think that the computer could go through and say, if this happens, then I need to do this. But if that happens, I need to do that. Well, uh, the human mind is obviously... Uh, nothing to be trifled with. So computers are amazing. I think the human mind is a little bit more amazing. Well, um, well as it pertains to the Fen treasure, we haven't found that one beautiful mind. Not yet. So um, why not exhaust all options? That's all I'm saying. Here's one. Hi, guys. This is from Donnie. Oh. You, you remember on our last show, uh, we said hi to a couple of our new That's subscribers. Right. That's right. We did a shout and, out. And Donnie was one of those. He says, I'll start off by saying, <clears throat> excuse me, that I've never been interested in vlogs before my introduction to Men Are So Smart. On the days that I am stuck at a desk doing mind-numbing work, I always throw on my headphones and listen to documentaries spanning a wide variety of topics depending on my mood, usually UFOs or something. Recently, I listened to one about Fenn's treasure, and it intrigued me enough to look up more about it. This is how I found you guys. I also visited a few others 
who do fence shows, but all I hear is searchers bickering for hours on end. Your show is informative and most of all entertaining. I find myself listening to your non fen shows as well on those boring desk days at work. Great job. Keep it entertaining. Donnie Lee. So thank you, Donnie. We appreciate it. We're glad that you're aboard. Yep. Um, and, and I will say this. I have noticed that there is, but it's, you know what? It's true with any social media site you go to that you have people um, with different levels of interest to whatever topic you're talking on. Let's, you know what? Let's take this one step further. Keep your thought. The, the What Ronnie is talking about here is last night, we were part of the live show that was done by a show called Flipside. Right. And uh, we were commenting on the search and, and saying hi to friends, that sort of thing. So, okay, now we were on it. What did you take from the flip side, Ronnie? It's like like everything else, you have a few people that are, are boots on the ground and that are very interested and that are making uh, what I would call... I mean, real, real comments. They're commenting in real time to what uh, what was being said on the live broadcast, and then you have a slightly larger portion of people that are not boots on the ground, but there are but they're obviously researchers, and they're making comments. And then you have a percentage of people that throw out nonsensical comments that. You know they're just they're there they they follow him and they probably are not researchers or searchers they're just kind of they found something live and they're going to comment on it and and that's you know I mean I don't even know how many people were in there last night it had to be forty five people maybe mm -hmm. I'm guessing I'm not sure kind of looking for bigger numbers when we do that yeah um, but still it was nice turnout. But it was kind of, uh, there were really only just a handful with anything really pertinent to say. Well, Sean, who hosts the show, Sean Dodson, sent me an email and he says, Ronnie and Lou, oh, wait a minute. Oh, he got That's it right. That's not right. He got it right. Ronnie and Lou, I enjoy watching your videos on the Forest Fen treasure hunt. And I would like to extend an invitation to join me for a live YouTube show to discuss all things Fen. Let me know. So he's invited us to come on the show. And uh, Sean, thank you. That's yeah. very nice of you. Yeah. Um, Ronnie and I are still kind of tossing that around to see if there's a time when we would be available to both do that. And um, boy, I just wanted to say, if anybody knows a ton about Fenn, it's Sean. He does. Oh, oh dude, he was quoting paragraphs <laughs> and, and, and sentences numbered. and uh, Yeah. Wow, he's quite impressive. So... I, I don't know if we're in the same ballpark as him. Yeah. But uh, if he wants us on, you know, as long as it's all for good and positive. Yeah. And I think we're probably going to do that. We'd like to hear from you. Would you like to see us go live on Flipside? Uh, please feel free to comment below and let us know, okay? That's about all I got over here. I got a one more I wanted to get to. Where is it? Right here. Here we go. Uh, hey, Lou, this is from Treasure Tracer. Remember him? Yes. His name is Jack. Hey, Lou, you know, I really have grown to like your guy's show. You just read someone's email that put it in perspective. You provide a point of view that is not clouded by someone who is actually searching, and that is unique. I was wondering, says Jack, and I'm, I'm hoping for your feedback here, and I know as you're watching this live, you're commenting. Please continue to do so. I was wondering if you guys would entertain an idea, Ronnie. As you may have seen, known searchers have started rooms at treasuretracer.com's forum. Initially, we were thinking we would just have searchers with a room, but I thought it would be cool to add another classification, something like news and entertainment room, and have you guys channel be the only one. Huh? Wow, I'm, I'm humbled. The way the room works is you run it like your condo. Whatever you want, you moderate and post all the treasure hunting stuff you want. Post a link to your channel, website, whatever. There are no rules. You guys are just entertaining, and I think it would help with what we're trying to do and would help you guys as well, Sign Jack. You know what? Flattered. No rules? That's right in my wheelhouse. And you know, I got to tell you, um, I, I 
I'm going to go out on a limb here and say I believe Jack is the number one searcher, lead searcher. <laughs> I believe he is. He is a real professional treasure hunter. Well, it says so right in his name. It does. Yeah. Okay. Um, thanks for watching today, Sunday morning mass. Yep. Uh, we'll be staying here for comments uh, long after the video is over with. We'll be here from 7 to about 10, Yep. I think is when I'm clear, and then i got to get to editing and such. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, please subscribe to our channel. But as I said in a in a video this, earlier this week, look, if you're going to subscribe on Monday and on Friday, you're going to unsubscribe, don't bother. Okay, I, I get really frustrated when I see that the subscriber number goes down one or two. It's very frustrating. Uh, if you're going to subscribe to our channel, we want you to be, we want this to be a long-term relationship. Uh, uh, we want to have you, uh, every show, be it Fen or not. Yeah. Um, we'd like to have you check out our videos. We believe them to be entertaining and funny and informational. And that's why we do it. Um, each one of the views that we get is, is very important to us, as are the subscribers. Oh, and I just wanted to mention, Ronnie. Yes. We got a big number this week. We reached a milestone with our show, thanks to you folks. Uh, Facebook monitors several things, which are views, subscribers, and minutes. It's YouTube, not Facebook. Oh, I'm sorry, Facebook. Uh, you, I mean YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get to this because I'm so excited. Uh, YouTube uh, just sent us a message that said we'd hit a milestone, which was over 500,000 minutes watched of our show. We went over 500,000, a half a million minutes. That's a lot. And it's all because of you guys watching the show. Well, I've watched a couple shows myself. And I watched that one that one day, remember? <laughs> so, but we've gone over 500,000. So oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Taking those out that we've watched. Right, yeah. Plus or yeah. minus 500,000. <laughs> right. <laughs> could be a million, you know, or it could be five. Yeah. No, uh, 500,000, half a million viewers. That is pretty impressive. I've, I never, when we started this, honestly, never thought it would get to that point. I know. But I know. And you know what? Uh, I can see that once you reach a certain level, it actually it starts uh, snowballing. Yeah. So it could even, it could go up pretty dramatically in a much shorter time. I think so too. And yep. Remember when we were looking at the subscribers and it was like 15? Right. It was all friends and family. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Hey, subscribe to this channel. I'll never Please. watch, but I'll subscribe. Please. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and, oh, oh, over 80,000 views. That also. I forgot to mention. That is pretty impressive. And remember, Ronnie, there were times when we sat here and we thought to ourselves, we can't do this anymore. Nobody's watching. Well, nobody's going to watch this. It was kind of like the, uh, what did they call that? The XFL? Right. <laughs> it was, it was good on paper. Yeah. Not so good in, in execution. You know, and I, at one point, uh, they caught Rod Woodson, Steeler safety, amazing, but he was one of the commentators on the XFL, and he, he his mic was live, and he said, nobody's even watching this. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I was watching, Rod. He was wrong, <laughs> and so many other people were wrong, and to a degree... We both were wrong. Yep. <laughs> we never thought it would catch on like this, but no. truly, we are so grateful. I think we're more popular than the XFL. I think so. Yeah. Because there are people watching. We're right up there with the Beatles. <laughs> <laughs> right there. All right. Uh, what haven't we done? We asked you to subscribe. We did all that stuff. Check out our website. It's uh, menaresosmart.com. Yep. On Facebook, it's at menaresosmart. And uh, we appreciate you. We really do. I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. And thanks for watching Sunday Morning Mass. We hope that you enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And we'll see you next Sunday.